Welcome to this episode of Bar Chat. My name is Doug Brown. I'm the Executive Director of the Connecticut Bar Association. And I'm pleased to have with me as my guest today, Michael Koskoff, Principal in Koskoff, Koskoff & Beter, a national lecturer, famous trial attorney, and frequent guest on Court TV, as well as a proud member of the Connecticut Bar Association. Welcome. Thanks, Doug. So Thanks nice, for having me. So nice to have you here today. Uh, first, this is 2016 marks the 50th anniversary of the start of your practice. Congratulations yeah. on on that. You've had a tremendous uh, career in the first 50 years. <laughs> first 50 <laughs> in years. In the first yeah. 50 years. This is this episode of Survivor. This is, <laughs> that's right. Um, we were talking, uh, what we're here to talk about today is really the screenplay that you've been working on uh, in the background that's uh, being produced. Um, why don't you tell us about the screenplay and kind of how, how it came about? Well, it came about this way, Doug. A, a great friend of mine, Jack Zeldis, who mm -hmm. passed away last year and was yeah. the founder of Zeldis, Needle & Cooper, a mm -hmm. wonderful law firm, uh, was also something of a legal historian. And we were having lunch one day about eight years ago, and he said, did you know that there was a famous trial in Connecticut in 1940? And I said, no, I, I had never heard about it. Yeah. So he filled me in on it. And he said, you know, it would make a great screenplay. Mm -hmm. And I decided I'd give it a shot. Uh, and the story was this. Uh, in December of 1940, a woman by the name of Eleanor Strubing, mm -hmm. who was a Greenwich socialite, was found soaking wet clothing, battered and beaten, next to the Kensico Reservoir mm -hmm. in uh, Westchester. And she told a, a lurid story about having been raped multiple times by her chauffeur and thrown in the reservoir to drown. Wow. And immediately, word went out. Uh, news media picked it up. No internet then. There wasn't even television. <laughs> That's right. But the radios and the newspapers, and the newspapers would have multiple copies a day in those days. Sure. Front page story, socialite raped by a uh, colored man, colored butler. Oh. So there was a very heavy racial uh, element to yeah. it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So the NAACP, which was kind of a fledgling organization mm -hmm. at the time, was in New York. And they, the publicity was killing them. Because a lot of African-American people were coming north to get jobs in the emerging defense industry. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and uh, they said this was just people were getting fired because of this. People were afraid to have. It was long before all the anti-discrimination laws that, that we have today. Long before there was any discrimination law. At, right. Yeah. And, uh, and before what we come to view ordinarily as the civil rights movement. Sure, right. As which we think of as starting in the mid-50s. Well, this mm -hmm. is 1940 on the eve of World War II. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so they wanted to find somebody to defend this, this man. Mm -hmm. And they, they went to Bridgeport, and they found a man named Sam Friedman, mm -hmm. who was a young lawyer who was in practice with his brother, Erwin Friedman. Mm -hmm. uh, and they convinced him to participate in the case, to to become sure. a counsel in the case. Right. And to, and, but they assured him that a lawyer was going to assist them. Uh, because they were new lawyers, right? Because the they time. were new lawyers. And they were going to send up another lawyer to assist them. And that other lawyer who they sent up was Thurgood Marshall. Really? Thurgood Marshall <laughs> at the time was 32 years old himself, a very young lawyer. had been out of law school seven years, mm -hmm. but had already argued in the United States Supreme Court. At seven years out of law school. Seven years wow. out of law school. And he had, uh, it, the, the story focuses on the defense in this case. Uh, I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> okay, right. But these two lawyers who got together uh, to defend the case. And so it's a, it's a courtroom drama. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's what sure. initially interested me in it, having lived a good part of my life in the courtroom. Well, right. Right, and, uh, and experiencing a fair amount of courtroom drama of your own, right? Yeah. Oh, I always felt that the uh, movie industry didn't do justice to courtroom drama. <laughs> as, because as you just said, you know, I've experienced a lot of courtroom drama, and there is a certain lack of authenticity in most mm -hmm. Hollywood films. And yeah. uh, one of the things that motivated me to, to write this film was yeah. I sort of thought that I would have the ability, having been there, having lived in it, yeah. and still living in it, mm -hmm. 
uh, to be able to bring some of that authenticity in and mm -hmm. uh, to develop, to make a really good drama that people are going to want to see mm -hmm. and at the same time talk about an aspect of Thurgood Marshall that people just don't know. That's yeah, I mean, the, the, the image people have of Thurgood Marshall, if you, everyone were to close <laughs> his or her <laughs> eyes, you'd, you'd think of some old jowly man yeah. with a paunch belly and sort of good natured, but um, that was about it. But the young Thurgood There's Marshall. There's more, more to the man. Oh man, he was, he was very handsome. Mm -hmm. He was courageous. He was the life of every party. <laughs> he was brilliant. Uh, and uh, this was a side of Thurgood Marshall that has never been shown before. And so we were very fortunate in being the first ones to find this and in bringing it to the screen. So you've been a, a trial lawyer for many years, you know, confronted with a fascinating story. And, so was, and you wrote the screenplay with your son, right? Yeah, well, initially I wrote it, uh -huh. uh, and uh, I showed it around, and a producer got interested in it, and the producer said, you know, I really love this story, and you've done a really good job, but <laughs> it really needs some more work. It mm -hmm. needs character development, it needs See. some more, it needs to have a better arc. I mean, mm -hmm. there was, there was All a the lot things of that things. make a good movie, And right? my son is a screenwriter, ah, and I called okay. him up, and I said, Jake, how would you, would you would you do this with me? Uh -huh. And after much cajoling, he agreed. <laughs> Dad's project, right? Yeah, he said we didn't. I didn't want anything to do with it. <laughs> but he then he said, you know, I, it's you a know, good story, to, and I'm so glad he did because he 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 made it really the the screenplay it is today, and the, it's attracting quite a lot of attention now. So beyond this, the great story and the story of how you created it, what's the status of the screenplay now? Uh, it was just shot. We, the, really? The, the shoot was wrapped, mm -hmm. strangely, on, on July 2nd of mm -hmm. this year, mm -hmm. 2016, yep. at 5.30 a.m. <laughs> Overnight. Uh, <laughs> that, that was when, it, when the last shot uh, uh -huh. was taken. And it was supposed to, have, the shoot was supposed to have ended two days earlier. Mm -hmm. But they got some delays, and, sure. and this was not an unusual delay. But what was unusual was by coincidence, uh, July 2nd was Thurgood Marshall's birthday. Oh, that's and terrific. it was the anniversary of the signing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Isn't that interesting so coincidence? There's some, is that some karma is good karma. Absolutely, has been at work absolutely. So, yeah. who's, so there's movies shot um, and it's wrapped. Who are uh, some of the actors who are in the movie? Uh, well, uh, Chadwick Boseman plays Thurgood Marshall. Chadwick Boseman played Jackie Robinson in the movie 42 uh -huh. and also played James Brown in the James Brown biopic. Oh, wow. And he is about to be hitting the bigger screens with the Black Panther as the Black Panther. Really? Which is so Marvel this is a, comics wow. Thing. But, uh, and he's pretty well known, very well known, but also uh, Kate Hudson is in it, who's probably mm -hmm. the, the most well known sure. of the stars. This, it's an incredible cast. It is just we were just so fortunate that people liked it enough to join this cast. Um, but Sterling K. Brown, who played mm -hmm. Christopher Darden in the, in the O.J. Simpson thing right, that was right. just on TV, he plays the defendant. Dan Stevens, who was on Downton Abbey, mm -hmm. played uh, Mary's husband on oh, Downton Abbey. Oh, that's terrific. He plays the prosecutor. Wow. Uh, uh, James Cromwell, who is the, plays the judge, who's a mm -hmm. great uh, veteran actor. Uh, so it, it, it's an incredible cast, and playing Sam Friedman is one of the great actors who is, I think, are really making his mark, who's Josh Gad, mm -hmm. who is best known for his comedy, because he was the lead in the Book of Mormon on Broadway. And, really? Yeah, and also, <laughs> he's Olaf. The, uh, kids know him as oh, Olaf. Oh, the voice of um, Olaf. He in, is um, Olaf. And in Frozen, it, right? Everybody <laughs> knows Olaf in Frozen. Absolutely. So Josh uh, plays uh, Sam Friedman and does a incredible serious acting job this is uh, a different that's terrific and you got him. to be there for, as the screenwriter you were there on set I for, had to be. for yeah, all the, I did. I was all the there. action huh? I was there my son was there uh, and uh, we saw it develop through the multiple takes and retakes and different shots we have wow. a great director Reginald Hudlin who's 
was the producer of last year's Academy Award show, mm -hmm. uh, and is a fabulous director. Uh, we have a great cinematographer, Tom Siegel, who's one of the best Terrific. cinematographers. It's really a, it's so a from it's this all star all star group. People. So from Connecticut trial lawyer to hearing a story and a screenplay and and uh, we'll be able to see it on the big screen. That's uh, yeah. It's supposed to open either this year. With the, it may open this year if everything can be sure. put together by then, or it may, or next year. But and it terrific. would be supposed to be opening in five thousand theaters nationally. Well, that's terrific. We look forward to seeing it. Yeah. So, with all of your career and this exciting um, story that you get to tell, um, I know there are young young lawyers watching who aspire mm -hmm. to be whether it's screenwriters or uh, trial attorneys. Um, what advice would you have for a younger lawyer starting who says, look, th that's what I want to do. I want to be, you know, uh, very successful uh, in the courtroom. What, what kind of advice would you have for them? Well, uh, I, I, I think most of the advice that I have has to do with, learn it, with, with personal things. Okay. Um, I think people have to examine themselves to see what their feelings are. They have to be introspective. And here's the, here are the important, the important things to be a trial lawyer. I think the most important characteristic a trial lawyer needs is optimism. Because it's sort of the reverse of law school. In law school, you learn all the things that can go wrong, all the mistakes, all the errors, and you're taught to spot errors. And you become hypercritical. Mm, that's uh, true. <laughs> but uh, and and every the entire focus is on that you don't want to lose you don't want to lose mm -hmm. and I, I find especially with young lawyers that they're they're so afraid of losing they th they fear loss almost as if they it's death mm. uh, and that makes them overly cautious to be a trial lawyer you've got to be optimistic you've got to have faith in in fellow human beings that. If you believe in something and you understand it and you mm -hmm. put it ara aside correctly, right, that you will be able to communicate it, right. So that's that optimism is really important. The second thing is, uh, and don't think don't think you can predict the future. I mean that <laughs> you know anyone who thinks he or she can predict the future is going to live a life filled with disappointment. Really, you know yeah, you've got to do true. what seems right at the moment. Uh, and you've got to, you know, fight for for what you really believe. Fight for fight for your case. Don't don't worry about loss. And in in an order, the last thing I think that goes along with that is uh, self knowledge part mm. about uh, how risk averse am I as a person. Mm. And uh, I, I use a little bit of a test. You know, okay. if I could give you Fifty dollars now, or a hundred dollars, and or a fifty-fifty chance of getting a hundred dollars next week. Mm -hmm. What would you take? You know, a lot of people who are who are basically statistically balanced would say, <laughs> "Well, it's it's a toss -up. I could right. do either." But many people would say, "I'd take the fifty dollars now." Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think, and then. Test yourself a little further. Would you take forty dollars now, <laughs> rather than the chance of fifty-fifty chance yeah, of a hundred dollars right. next week? And yeah, know yourself. Thirty dollars yeah. now, or some people on the other side of the spectrum who are risk takers would say, "I want seventy dollars now." <laughs> <laughs> so that's a test. So and, know and yourself. To know yourself, know your capacity for risk, mm -hmm. uh, and. Face it. I mean, if you think you can overcome that fear of losing, then we've got a good shot of being a trial lawyer. If, if the fear of loss is going to be omnipresent, then maybe you should find something else. That's terrific. You know, that's, that's great advice, not just for trial lawyers, not just for screenwriters, but for people in business, too. Because right. yeah. those same characteristics are the things you need yeah. to be successful at Absolutely. running your own practice. If, if I were not a risk taker, I would never have written screenplay. And we'd never get to see the because story. Because the odds of it ever actually becoming a movie are probably one in a million. Yeah. Uh, with all the screenplays and especially from amateur, well my son is a professional but I'm an amateur. <laughs> well 
we really look forward to the film. I appreciate you coming in and sharing your story today. And uh, thank you again for, uh, for all you're doing. Great, Doug. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.